Brags, I don't like to boast. They like hot butter on the breakfast toast. Watching flicks, talking chicks, I like to mow boat. Can River Man make it your check? Nope. So look at all these movies I got. Commenting like, mmm, should we watch them or not? I know they just be acting for cash. But I still got one question to ask. Like, why do you do that? Do that? Do that? If that was me, I'd be like, screw that, screw that, screw that. I'm an alpha, I'd eat through that. Do that, do that. Mmm, so why'd he do that? Do that, do that. Mmm. All right, howdy, folks. This is week number three of our Jean Claude January Revival House Network BTM podcast. Got Zach here. Fucking Aaron being all low T right out of the gate. And myself, yes, Aaron, the low T guy. Very low T, Aaron. Anyway, Zach. What? He's sort of the the Jean Claude uh, newbie here, and why don't you tell everybody what we're doing? Oh, we're doing Death Warrant, baby! A fucking amazing picture. Yeah, you sound really quiet in my my monitors. Are you like whispering, or is that? It's because you have beta ears. I mean, that could be the case too. Um, I'm going to turn you up a little bit. Uh, yeah, so we're doing Death Warrant. We had some requests for this one. This is in my top echelon. Oh, it's a no holds barred action prison style. The best of Van Damme. Ten out of ten. <laughs> it, it is one of those uh, prison movies. And if you if you've seen this movie, you might know that it pretty much copies a blueprint from other movies just like it. It's essentially we. It's got pieces of Tango and Cash. It's got pieces of uh, Lock Up. It's just it's been done to death. Like the whole. Oh my God, someone's infiltrating a prison to kind of see what's going on on the inside. And then, oh my God, all their records and documents disappear because someone has it out for them from the outside, right? And Van Damme, he just gets in there and reads their records, not even a lock on the door. Fucking amazing. Yeah. So we're going to go and get started with it. Uh, I don't know if this is on Amazon. I know a lot of Van Damme movies are on Prime Streaming, but regardless, I think we're just watching a rip. It's right before that MGM line pops up. So we're going to go in three, two, one play van damn this movie to hell is more like it fucking you want to hear this uh this user review 10 out of 10 no holds barred action prison style the best of van damn listen to this death war 1990 is no holds barred action classic another prison style van damn movie it is my fourth favorite best underrated van damn movie. listen to all those qualifiers by the way it is my fourth favorite best underrated van damme movie amazing all those qualifiers this is fourth favorite well, this movie is a no holds barred action classic is that a Corey g review uh some other fucking idiot that likes this movie is, is that on big Kahuna movie review <laughs> no it's that? it's on imdb okay cynthia gibb is she related to the other motherfucking gibb that's his buddy in the other movie oh pff, i don't fucking know is that is that his fucking hey, sister? Ain't, well, are you talking about like the Bee Gees? Mm. Patrick, Patrick hey, Kilpatrick. I wish my name was Zach Kilzak. The sand. I always felt the Sandman plot was just kind of injected in there. Like that's not really the plot of the movie. But it's <laughs> like, the whole wraparound that the whole movie's revolved around. I guess. Well, they they have to have a big bad, right? And they have and, to, so they have to have that whole. I inter- gotta say, I prefer our boy, fucking, uh, fucking, uh, what's his name, fucking <laughs> Bobcat Goldthwait as the uh, Sandman. And uh, are you afraid of dark? Sandman, yeah. Take notice, this movie was written by David S. Goyer, who went on to write The Dark Knight. This guy, fucking David S. Goiter, he needs to get that fucking Goiter removed. You think there's pudding in that shit? That goiter. You're gonna see the you're gonna see the brilliant writing he did in this very first scene where, you know, he basically arrests the Sandman. It shows it's gonna show Jean Claude Van Damme and infiltrating the building in which he is. And the first lines of the dialogue, he's getting radioed in like you can't go in there alone or something. And Van Damme just goes, hey, he killed my partner. Amazing. <laughs> and it's it's the worst fucking dialogue ever. It tells you everything you need to know. Just by line dialogue. Well, that's great, smart uh, movie making. Wait, I have to hear it. I have to hear it. He killed my partner. Yeah, there's, I think he's in sight. I'm going to check it out. Here it is. He killed my partner. I'm not waiting. Mm, amazing. And I love how they injected that one little line of dialogue in there to, to explain his accent. Right, he's like, this isn't Canada. This is L.A. We do different. We do things differently here. So he's That's French. totally a Canadian accent too. 
French Canadian. Amazing. That right? They're passing off as French Canadian. Amazing. I mean, it sounds like that too. I'm going in. French Canadian. So, uh, would you, you? This is one of your favorites. Yeah, this is in my top. Probably my top four. Why are all these classic, quote unquote, Van Damme movies fucking five out of tens? You don't. You didn't think this one was any better than the other ones you watched? No. <laughs> You're nuts, man. I love it. You guys are fucking crazy. Dude, the fucking, uh, this one's got, this one's so quotable for me. He's like, care to sample any of my goods, my ladies, you know? I love it. I love the priest. I, I can't think of one quote from this movie. Dude, like, he think he too good for me, priest. That happened in this? Yeah. He's like, I'll take a rent check. Would you service any of my goods, my ladies? Oh, come on, man. You don't like the... That one character actor that's in everything when he's like, when he gets killed, when he gets uh, torched in his cell, right? They pour gasoline in there and he's like, somebody's lying on me, man. I, he's better in fucking Billy Madison. Yeah. <laughs> he's, I, can, uh, I can think of uh, the quotes from any other movies. And I, uh, that one episode of fucking uh, Seinfeld he was in. I had some delicious Trisket crackers in the car. Yeah, from Billy Madison. Well, what about uh, what about the warden though? He's the best crooked warden out of all these mo- same movies with the same blueprint. That they always have a crooked warden, right? That's getting uh, you know, kickbacks. And in this one, it's the dude from Man of the House, and he has one of the greatest lines ever. When uh, remember he said he's like he was here. He's like I can smell the N word. Remember when he says that? Fucking cringe. You don't remember when he says that? When he's I like, do. I- that was the cringiest fucking line in the movie. Because you can't you can't believe. It's actually in this that they say that fucking uh, this guy looks like fucking bootleg Joe Montana mixed with Super Dave Osborne. Amazing. Such good acting too. time to go to sleep like your partner. I love the dialogue. Like what? (laughs) It's so cheesy. Why would he tell him? Why would he tell him who is his alias? Like he's a well, because I think he knows. Like, oh, it sounds so badass when I say it. I'm the Sandman. You can't kill me. Yeah, and who took his eyebrows though? I don't know. They're in, they 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 left, and they're in a better movie. I honestly thought you were gonna like this one a little bit more. I I thought because this one is this one's good. This one's only a five, huh? Five. What about that little uh, horny hacker kid? All these early '90s movies had to have a hacker kid. Right, and uh, I would have rather watched his movie. I like, I like when he's like walking in, strutting his stuff after catching the Sandman. Listen to the music. You hear that music? It's so good. Look at his, look at his cocky, look at the cocky smile on his face. Like, hey man, like he's the badass cop man that took down the Sandman. Look at him. How come he's the one cop that doesn't have to wear a beat suit? He comes in in Armani and shit. Amazing. Because he's just that cocky man. He's Van Damme. Yeah, I wonder what scenes of this movie he wrote. Like, uh, he he meets this chick, and it's like, oh yeah, she's gonna be your partner because you gotta like infiltrate this prison, pretend to be like you you know you're you're locked up and shit, and she's gonna be your partner. She's gonna like pretend to be your wife, and she's gonna bring you some shit. He like talks to her literally twice in the movie, and then like and then whenever, he fucks her. Yeah, then he needs it was, it, the congregal the congregal visit or whatever it is. The congregal he's like that horny. He's been locked up with dudes for like a day. And he just starts coming on to her, and she just goes with it. Like, uh, it makes sense. Like that's uh that's totally cool in twenty twenty one. Fucking uh, retardational. Well, yeah, they don't have any history, so he can't possibly like her. He's just horny because he's been locked up for so long, and he well, just fuck one of the guys, you pussy. <laughs> but yeah, so he can't possibly like her. He's just all pent up and stuff but he's only been in there what a couple days it's so funny this movie also has benson right that's the black guy that the warden was putting down or that i mentioned and uh, he also played rafiki in the lion king rakishi's in this rakim rakishi no that fucking big ass fucking ass of the rakishi fucking motorboat that ass like the, our boy did fucking vince mcmahon <laughs> no but uh, yeah, man. So you have the little hacker kid, and he's like constantly horny. You think after that he got that motorboat treatment, he had to floss afterwards. Like you think the hairs in Rakishi's ass floss his teeth for him? Uh, sure, maybe. 
He's probably picking fucking little hairs off his teeth for like a month afterwards. I'd hope so. Exactly. I don't even... Do we know her from anything else? Because I don't think I've ever seen her in anything else. And I think she's fine, but I don't think she's like a, like amazingly beautiful or anything. <coughs> Gross. My stomach is killing me, by the way. I got so much gas. So how's your weekend, man? How's it started off for you? What'd you do today? Fucking nothing. Fucking Not- uh, one week closer to death. There you go. Well, you didn't do anything else? You didn't watch any movies? You didn't play any games? You didn't do anything? I caught up on uh, Cobra Kai. I'm all caught up now. It won me over. I'm on board with it now. Yeah. So what'd you think about season three versus two? It, it worked for me, baby. Yeah. It worked. Is it me or does each season kind of get a, l- a little bit darker? And not, I mean, I know it's not a dark show, but just a little bit less fun. Not that that's a bad thing, but a little bit more serious. I don't see. Yeah. The, the, the ending of that second season, there's nowhere to go but more serious after that. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. So there was just less uh, funny stuff. They got rid of characters like Stingray. You know, uh, that just aren't on the show anymore. All these people that were comic relief, and it's just very... Uh, and then we start going to the backstory of Crease and stuff, which is dark and stuff. Crease? I don't know. But I love it. I think it's really good. Would you fuck his uh, Crease? No, I wouldn't. I would. I'm glad Martin Cove redeemed himself with the show, because the last thing I saw him in was that VFW movie. It wasn't very good. Who's Martin Cove? Crease. Just call him Crease. Nobody knows him by his real fucking name. Martin Cove was in Last House on the Left. He's always going to be Crease. He's always going to be Crease. Anyway, so uh, Van Damme, just like that. I got to respect the movie, though, because it picks up. It's real fast. I mean, he's already here in prison. He's already getting transported. We had an intro scene to establish him and the Sandman. And then he's walking in like cock of the walk in the office and the, the, the police precinct. And they're like, hey, we got to send you undercover. And here he is. And he's surrounded by Mike Muir's. A lot of Mike Muir cosplayers. That looks like one of the Wayans brothers for some reason. Who who wrote this movie? Probably Sheldon Lettich. Yeah, I said he wrote this. Oh, no. Oh, no, Dave, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. David S. Goyer wrote this movie. I'm sorry. I said this was his first script. And it shows. Yeah, well. Hey, there's a fat... There's a fat freaking, uh, what's his name? Emilio Estevez there. It's like Emilio Estevez and Travis Tritt, like, fucked each other. Had a (laughs) fucking ass baby. So, and it's very possible, David S. Goyer, if this really was his first feature-length film credit, it's possible that it it got passed around. And uh, I don't really know how the politics go. I know for a fact, though, the person who gets the screenwriting credit is whoever wrote the initial draft. So it always confuses me when I see script credits going to like 15 people. So I don't know how that works. I, I, I think that's like all politics. It's almost like the executive producer credit. Like somebody somebody's putting up something for the movie and they made a suggestion and they're like, hey, I want a credit. I don't know because, you know, that's why... That's why Sylvester Stallone continuously gets a uh, single soul screenwriting credits for these Creed movies and these Rocky movies. He only writes the first draft, really, you know, and it's not even the same. It's like he kind of gives you the basic skeleton and then it kind of goes through other people or whatever and gets cleaned up and, and it changes. But he still he still gets the credit. I mean, shouldn't he? Like if, if all you're doing is changing random things, but it's still his overall story. He's probably the fucking writer still. No, and that's that's how it works, though. That's the actual rules to it. So even if like Stallone presented the first rough draft, you know, they're, you're all deriving from that draft. Anybody that takes the script, any ideas or tweaks or changes, it's all coming from that original skeleton. So that's what the way it like works. In, in his original version, everybody's like a fucking retard like Rocky. Like, hey, everybody's walking around, don't know how to read and shit. Stallone, we got to rewrite this. Every character is Rocky. What's going on here? But I've always heard that was the rule. But then again, maybe it's like a case by case basis. Maybe because I know I remember David Hayter because he was a screenwriter and he he wrote Watchmen and he wrote the first X Men movie right with Patrick Stewart and and that's kind of his biggest claim to fame. You wrote it with Patrick Stewart. That's dog. No. 
Well, no, the the first X Men movie has quite a few fucking writers in the screenwriting credit, and I remember he's been interviewed, and you know he was talking about. Um, you know, they all just kind of uh, wrote different drafts or whatever. And he was talking about, yeah, like my 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 favorite line that I wrote out made it in the movie, so I'm happy. And uh, so, but and it's weird. Like, why do they all get credit? Like, it blows me away because you know, if I wrote a fucking story and mine was the winning version, but we kind of liked this one guy's verbiage or script, I don't know. I'd feel really weird about giving somebody an equal billing when I wrote 99% of it, you know? Why would you want to be one of like 10 guys that wrote a movie anyway? What? Even if it was the best movie ever. It's like, fucking, you look incompetent at that point. What'd you say? He disappeared. You what? You you totally cut out. You cut out that whole time when you were saying that, so I don't know what you said. Yeah, yeah I heard, why would you? I said, why would you want to be one of like 10 guys that wrote a movie anyway? Like you just look incompetent at that point, even if it was the best movie ever. And I mean, it's just, it's just because you want to credit and you want to beef up your resume. But I think people in the industry know what's up when they see all those people. Like they know it's more, it's just more boasting than anything. Like it's probably like the whole executive, the produ- executive producer thing. It's like that, or it's like a fucking shitty producer credit. They just give to somebody for a few dollars and it's a participation trophy or whatever. Now for a prison movie, this is very tame. Nothing really too prison. He happens in this prison. Yeah. It's not like a fucking woman's exploitation prison movie or anything. There's no rape or anything. Uh, you know, there's a couple of like here, he's going to meet his cellmate who tries to be threatening towards him. And I like it. He's like, I don't pay. I don't punk. You know, that that's because of him writing it too. He's just like, we're not going to have some big beefier guy come in and beat me up. It's like, there's no way I get ripped. It's like I gotta, I gotta bitch out the the guy I'm with. It's like, it would have been a better movie to see like a big bald guy come in and force him to suck his dick while he had his knife up well, to his neck or something. That'd be great. Well, or, but you could argue that it would have made him look tougher if it, if it was a big beefier guy that he just got the best of and beat the shit out of. Like, you see, I'm Van Dam. I'm five foot eight, but it doesn't matter. Hey, so this guy, how come he's allowed to walk around like he just, I don't know, walked out of the movie cruising? Everybody else has a blue fucking shirt on. He gets to walk around with this weird vest on. Yeah, whatever he wants to. Like, I, I love, uh, look, <laughs> you pay, you punk. No, I don't think so. Excuse me? This whole scene's hilarious to me, dude. I, I don't pay. I don't punk when he's got him up against the wall. So he's like, hey, take me. a movie. When you see the a top pres- bunk is yours. The bottom would be nice. Go ahead. Yeah, quit spurging out with this shitty movie. We need to see a prison movie where the fucking guy is like fucking sucking cock and all the shit he's got to do to stay alive. Because like, oh, that's manly. You got you to gotta be a man. You got to fucking take that cock so that you survive another day. It sounds to me like you should just watch the show Oz. Mm. You you still haven't watched Oz, right? Mm-mm. Okay, well, it should be on a- HBO. Watch it. That show is fucking awesome. And it uh, it is gritty, and it's got everything. And it's got all the different types of people you can imagine in a big fucking prison. And the most fascinating character... I mean, there's a lot of main characters. But the most fascinating character who has the biggest arc is um, Lee Turgeson. You know, the guy from Wayne's World. I love you, man. No, I love you. That guy. And he's fucking the best. And he goes through a crazy arc where he kind of does all this shit you're talking about. He just kind of goes everywhere in that movie. Every which way but loose. It's a great fucking movie, though. It's a show. It's a great show. It sucks. Uh, it's kind of weird going back and watching these shows that were pre-HD. And you got to watch them in like the, you know, the old format. And I don't mind that, but. I don't know. I'm spoiled by HD stuff. Oh, that's that's fucking just terrible. Whenever they zoom in and crop shit out, never do that. No, I, I don't. Th- I don't think that's. I haven't watched it on HBO. I watched it on Prime, and it, they didn't. And uh, but yeah, it just looks. Maybe they did because I remember it looking a little distorted. But I don't really know. I wish they could go back and 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 I wish they would treat old series like that, like they do with movies, and you know, give them like uh, restorations and stuff. But the show is fucking awesome. It's it's in probably my top three. Well, they only can if they shot on film. A lot of times they don't. I mean, they didn't shoot fucking Roseanne on film. There's a lot of good shows out there to compete now. But if you put a gun to my head and said top three, I'm going to say Quantum Leap. I'm going to say Breaking Bad. I'm going to say Oz. You know, something like that. Fucking no Twilight Zone. What a beta. Everybody would, wouldn't shut up about The Wire. And I tried watching The Wire a couple years ago, and it just wasn't pulling me in. Like like everybody said it would 
I'm sure it's a great show. I, I I watched a handful of episodes, but it just it just wasn't pulling me in like I wanted it to. Apparently, that was like one of the big defining ways to like uh, HDFI a fucking series too was with the wire. It's like they took all the original film and like oh luckily oh even though it's getting cropped to the TV ratio we still shot it in film and H and fucking widescreen and then like oh yeah there's some certain parts where like the the uh the crew was like present in the shot, like standing, holding the boom mic. We uh, digitally erased them. Shit like that. That's a donk. That's what you need to do. See, they, they put out a Blu-ray series of fucking Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and they just left the fucking crew members in. And like fucking uh, apparently the original film negatives didn't have the uh, finished like fucking uh, uh like optical effects so they had to redo them and they all look different shittier weird so basically yeah don't get that fucking uh hd version of that show he's sitting down here uh with rafiki benson over here and he's like what you doing here don't you notice the negro table the white table's over there so this is also van damme serving himself like like, I don't want to sit there. I want to sit here because he wants to. Yeah, imagine having to sit with these fucking chuds. Holy shit. Yeah, look at. I know, but like, it doesn't it? It's making Van Dam look like this whole. I got to look like I'm this uh, very saintly. No, I I don't I don't see color. I want to sit with the colored guy. You know, <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those things. But yeah, he's sitting with those guys. That guy doesn't have a fucking eye. I'd be sitting with him too. Well, I love that guy looks like he smells like a trash can, dude. The dude on the right looks fucking terrible. And so he goes, hey, hey, fish. Why don't you sit over here? He calls him fish. What's that tattoo say? Uh, I think it's, I don't, oh, it's lives. I, it, it represents like uh, how many people he's killed or live to die. It says live to die. That's right. Fuck. Oh, the, the it, it's the guy right here, the Mexican guy, or the Puerto Rican. He's got the tally marks or whatever. Oh, he's got the names of all his victims. That's fucking stupid. It said Osborne. I guess he killed Ozzy Osborne. Fuck uh, his haircut's amazing. Yeah, that, that's that's what they tell you. They tell you like if you ever go to prison, you have to get in. Like you you can't fucking. Basically, they uh, they're already all separated by race, so you basically have to hang out with the white nationalists. If you if you're a white guy, you got to. If you're a black guy, you got to hang out with the the. Well, yeah, it's fucking. It's fucked up what they tolerate. They tolerate in the prison system. Yeah, because they pretty much force you into doing that. Right, and, and it, it ultimately just leads to making you a better criminal. When you when you get with these other fucking people that do crazy shit already, and they they tolerate it, man. They just they literally throw all these people in a giant fucking pig pen and just let them go hog wild on each other. They'll break up fights if they happen, kinda. But you know, rapes happening, all kinds of shits happening, and like you've mentioned many times, they make it a big joke, right? You wouldn't last five seconds in the pen. Yeah, the fact that rape happens in prison and we know about it, and like. You fucking put it's up okay, with it, cause they, let cause alone cause... make jokes about it, is a crime against humanity. Like, how the fuck isn't people talking about that? I know it is funny, right? Because it's we we consider them lower because what they have no more rights. So they're not a human anymore. <laughs> like, they don't have the, they, they, the the politician who were to like run on that would just get fucking tarnished and uh, tarred and feathered by the opposition as being like, oh, they're pro criminal. They want to be uh, fucking uh, lenient with the criminals. Ridiculous. The only thing, when people are incarcerated, the only thing they've lost their right to is freedom for however long their term is there. That's it. They haven't lost their human rights. Like, they, yeah. ob obviously, they're, guess what? They're feeding them, right? Because as, as a human being, you got to feed somebody, but they don't give a shit if they're getting raped and dehumanized and all this other shit. It's pretty and fucked the, up. There are people who think, oh, yeah, they're getting raped. That's part of the punishment. That's so fucked up. That is, con yeah, and then they make jokes. You'll see on all the shit. Cops will make those jokes, right? Oh, you'll la he'll last a long time, won't he? Yeah. <laughs> like, they know what's coming. And, uh, insane. We like to think we're so fucking civilized in the modern world. We ain't. Well, they make that, they make that worse. They know when they're sentencing someone to, uh, a, a, a higher security prison and they're going to throw them in gen pop. They know what that means. There's a reason why that's fucking bad. Oh, we're going to throw you in gen pop. We're going to send you over to fucking San Quentin and gen pop. How do you like that? Yeah. Gen pop. So everybody can fucking rip you in from limb and fuck your every hole in your body. Amazing. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, they know it's there. It's just weird hierarchy of shit. That's, um, yeah, it's pretty messed up. Now you should watch the, but on that note of, uh, people pretty much having to acclimate, 
that's Oz. That that main, that character I was talking about. He 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 basically enters prison as the only good guy because he's just sort of a guy that was a victim of a, a mistake. He was a good guy. He was an attorney. He just had a bit of a drinking problem and he accidentally killed someone while drinking and driving. Right. So nothing was. And he kind of comes in like real timid, you know. But let's just say by the end of the show, man, he goes through a total arc and he kind of gets sucked into the white supremacy group, not because he wants to, but because they kind of own him into it. You know, it's and uh, it's not like anybody else is going to take him. Right. Exactly. See, imagine if they made Oz in like the Netherlands and fucking the retire from Bur- Burzum's like the main character of the show. He's recording an album that wouldn't be as entertaining as watching guys get fucked in the mouth and shit. I back in the MySpace days, I used to read his vlogs from jail because he has he had like Internet access. He they let him write books from prison. They let him. And it was so funny because the guy Varg, Varg, he tried to escape like five times and they caught he escaped. He I think he successfully escaped multiple times and they just kept catching him. And it's funny because you just read his blogs on MySpace and they'd be so nonchalant. Like I I attempted to escape yesterday and they'd caught me five kilometers away. Like. And that you still have access to all your shit, huh? And these motherfuckers don't like re re enter as much as we do. How does how does this make any sense? It's so funny. And he didn't get any. He doesn't get any more time added onto his sentence. Like, of course, I would. If you're not going to punish me or increase my sentence or throw me in some Dude, like cell, probably I would. To, they probably had to listen to that motherfucker's music as he's recording. They probably couldn't wait to get him the fuck out of there. You know what I'm saying? They're like, I, who wouldn't try to escape all the time if there's no repercussions of it? Like, it, it's like no harm, no foul. I wouldn't. It seems pretty fucking fun there. <laughs> Hang out recording an album. I mean, not only did he... Uh, did he get let out like fucking just a couple of years after all that shit? He had enough money to buy a farm and buy some land. And I mean, Burzum, I get it, is Burzum, but come on, they ain't fucking make no money. Where's his money coming from? Who's buying Burzum records? Fucking retards. Maybe you got a sugar mama, one of those, uh, you know, pen pal a prisoner, like someone that's hot and bothered for prison inmates. Exactly. That's what they all do. All these fucking like Charlie Mansons, they marry some young piece from prison that's just obsessed with their lore, right? And they'll marry him and uh, I don't know. It's like, oh, he's going to be in prison the rest of his life. I could be married to him and have fame and I don't even have to hang out with him at night. Pretty donk. I just got to go there and fuck him. Oh, exactly. How would it, how would you like to have Charlie Manson's dick inside you? Like that's that's what she was getting off on, right? Like, oh God, I got the Charlie Manson's cock inside of me. He's the guy that ins- that you know fucking convinced people to kill people, orchestrated Sharon Tate's murder. Yeah, yeah. That fucking old lady she was just hanging out with. Would you hit it? What? Who? That old lady she was just hanging out with. She looked like oh, an a- old Nancy Allen or something. It's it's this guy really quick that's in every action movie of this era. He's in Lethal Weapon as a goon. He's in this movie. Uh probably in fucking one of the Die Hards, Die Hard 2 or something. He was he showed, I think his last name is Zhang. And he's always got that same skullet. Zhang. Zhang. Amazing. Yeah, he's still got a ways to go to catch up with James Hong, but I think he's got a huge hog. I don't, pff, no, look at these, dude. I mean, not to stereotype, but never. I'll just leave it there. Fucking, you have to have a huge hog with a mustache like that. I mean, there's a reason why you have to learn kung fu and karate and all that stuff from the womb when you come from that part of the world because you're gonna have to get used to defending yourself because uh, probably got a little dick. If, why the fuck would they I'm all just, have I'm, to defend themselves? They all have a little dick. Well, I guess you're right. They don't plan on moving to the States. That doesn't make sense, Aaron. I'm just fucking with everybody anyway. Your your made up world sense. doesn't make sense in the context of its own bullshit, Aaron. I don't want to alienate our, our eventual you know, Pacific Rim audience. I don't think we have much. Most of our listenership is uh US and North America, Canada, and then in Europe too. Yeah. But if you guys are in the future and we got we like blew up, we're big in Japan all of a sudden. Uh, and you guys are listening to this in the future. We don't mean it. We're just joking. I never meant it. I love your dicks. See, we can tell. We love your tiny cocks. We, I, we you can tell whenever fucking uh, our boy here is getting really big, cum brain by the fucking bulge on his head getting bigger. 
That's why whenever he fucks the girl later, it's like fucking almost as big as a softball. If you look closely. <laughs> That's his nut button. So I've always wondered, uh, you know, does someone like does someone like David Goyer, does he do a lot of research? Or, these people that are screenwriting prison movies, how many of them actually been to prison? Probably none. So are they just assuming this is the way prisons are or are they... Or is some of this accurate? Like, I've always wondered, is there really a prison that's so out of control where there literally is a guy like the Sandman who has an entire wing to himself and they let him basically run the place and he's got all these fucking shemale prostitutes and, you know, he gets whatever he wants. He can get anything. He's that guy that just can get access to cigarettes. And you know what I mean? Like, is this really how prison is? It, fucking his entire research uh, comprised of listening to all the live in prison records that Johnny Cash put out. That's all you need to know. Well, I can imagine there being a situation like Goodfellas, right? I remember when Paul Servino was locked up and, uh, you know, he's obviously a mafia don and he's got money and power on the outside. I guess you could see someone like him being able to buy off guards and shit, you know, but even still. Really, though, fucking live at Folsom Prison and uh, San Quentin are two of my favorite live albums. Those are donk. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. The OG Fuck the Police songwriter, Johnny Cash. You ever see the Metallica video that they did in San Quentin? For Saint Anger? I'm not fucking retarded. Saint Anger? Hell no. It's the best best thing about that song is the video. Uh, but they, they did it in San Quentin for all the prisoners and stuff, and it, they recorded the video. Did they let all the prisoners out and just one by one let them fucking take a piece of Metallica just beat the fuck out of them with their instruments and shit? No. Then I ain't interested. They had another video for the unnamed feeling off that same album that had Eddie Furlong. And this is how fall far Eddie Furlong star has fallen. He's not, you, you'd only know he was in the video by looking at the IMDB and then you watch the video and he was cut completely. Like, they circumcised him. Yeah, he was cut. <laughs> he was cut. <laughs> no. Uh, and I, I saw that I'm like Eddie Furlong's in that. So I go back and I watch the video and there's like half a frame where you see like the back, like half the half of the back of his head. I'm like, oh, I guess that was him. It's funny. See, look, I would rather be hanging out with these guys already. They're smoking dope. Fucking uh, looking at his white eye. You know, it's white because he's got he's so full of cum brain. And then the other guy back there, he's just fucking hanging out there. What what was he doing with like quarters or something? See, this is who you want to hang out with, not those fucking. That fucking one dude looked like he was probably one of the guys storming the Capitol earlier this week, whatever. The fucking the tattoo on his neck. No, dude, I like Benson. He's a good character in this. Yeah, he's got a fucking white eye. I'd fucking have sex with him. So okay, he's taking him to see to meet the priest, right? So the priest. It's like he lives in the fucking basement. Like, I'm assuming it's this entire basement wing that just belongs to him. Like, I mean, doesn't it? It's like, why is it isolated from everybody? Hell yes. See, the priest, you want to hang out with the priest because he's got fucking the femme boys hanging out with him, too. You get to fuck the shit out of those femme boys and hang out with the he's priest. Got, his main one is this, uh, the one that helps him later, right? Remember, remember she gives him, tips him off that they're coming for him in the middle of the night, this one. And she's like, I just hate to see a good man go to waste. Right, okay, he, but it looks like if he was a little cooler, he'd have cat boys fucking surrounding him. Fucking internet cat boys. The, I, I'm seeing a lot of I'm seeing a lot of two Wong Fu motherfuckers in here. So his main one with the Cleopatra fucking uh, Rick James haircut looks like Wesley Snipes and two Wong Fu. That white guy with the big ass fucking Adam's apple who just opened up the gate look like fucking Patrick Swayze. Sex. Uh, yeah. You you need to find yourself a woman with a fucking dick. You need to find a chick with a dick if that puts yours to shame. It's the only thing. It's back breaking. You want to fucking get no mercy when they're fucking you, like a Cobra Kai. So, did they specifically ask for a Kareem Abdul Jabbar type for the role of priest? That's what I would have done. Because doesn't he remind you of Kareem Abdul Jabbar? He's like, you want a sample of my goods? I take a rain check. I was like, I take a rain check. Kareem's dick is a little bigger than this guy, from what I remember. Well, it's been a while. I love when he says that. Like, I'll take a rain. He's like, you sure you don't want to sample any of my goods? He's like, I'll take a rain check. And I like how he just laughs. Ha, 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 ha. And he's just like laughing like a creep. Like, okay. See, his cum brain isn't big enough now to like not take that rain check. But later it will be. 
See, we should have had a scene where he's just fucking these two right there. This is right, right in front of the priest, and the priest is watching Jacking off, saying a prayer and shit, because he is the priest. Why do you think they call him a priest? Is he a big uh, Judas Priest fan or something? No, I don't know. He's maybe he's like he looks like he's got some Santeria or something. I don't know. He just kind of maybe he fucks little boys. Well, no, he does not Santeria. Look, he's got a crucifix on his ear. That's a Jesus on the cross. Exactly. I don't know, but he got creepy eyes too. His eyes are fucking dark. <laughs> Those look like colored lenses. I don't think uh, real eyes look like that. I don't think so either. Or he's just on the dankest fucking drugs. He's fucking he's Sam zoning. My ladies. He, he's doing the ayahuasca. He's having the trip like fucking like our boy Ash was in the last episode we did. <laughs> like, why is he laughing? It doesn't make any sense. He just says, I'll take a rain check. And he's just dying laughing. Yeah, he heard his he heard his bad acting. That was just his real act. Oh, his real fucking reaction to his acting. <laughs> Look, he's just, he's uh, fucking he's this good guy. He's uh, you know he's uh, washing the floors. He fucking uh, he's so good. See, I'm just trying to find parallels between the other movies. Hey, I know I know this is more of a question for Mac, but did you see those screenshots for that Mortal Kombat movie that got put out officially? You with your autistic Mortal Kombat shit. I did see it. Well, you've seen the mo- you've seen the other Mortal Kombat movies, so what is your opinion? I know they're just pictures. But what's your opinion? Just I stuff? saw the one that was in the thumbnail and I didn't click it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that tells me everything I need to know. I really don't care. They're going to go, Ooh! someone's going to go, hi, 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 hi. and it's going to be a fucking movie. Yeah! It's going to it's going to have a beginning, middle and end. And it'll probably be a five out of ten. I like when Kung Lao would like fucking do his uh, torpedo move, and he go liggy or liggy. Amazing. When you get here, what is uh, Raiden? What does he do? I don't know. They're all fucking Aspie shit. Like I don't speak Aspie, even though I am Aspie. But you know what we got to do a commentary for when it comes out. Probably. We already did the other ones. He's got Mountain Dew in that cup. Yeah, it's like, what is this? Yeah, he's freaking out. Like, it's some kind of drug or chemical. And I mean, I don't know. You think it's Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel? Yeah, I, w- I would talk. That's for sure. Don't put that fucking nasty shit in my mouth. Oh, I always drink a nice bottle of Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. It gets it, it cleanses your fucking thirst like some other Mountain Dew beverages just can't do. Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. So what? Yeah. What is what is well, what what is the thing about Game Fuel? Is it- that's kind of an inside joke? Yeah. Anytime somebody's shilling in Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, they always have. They can't just call it amped. They can't just call it Game Fuel. They can't just call it Mountain Dew. They always have to say Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, and it, it became a joke. Like anytime somebody talks about it on their podcast or on fucking live streams, it's like, oh, I'm gonna drink some Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. You always gotta call it by its full name if you want to get that pun that money. Yeah, but it, what is the whole thing with it? Does it just have more caffeine? Is that all it is? Like, so you I could, think it's fucking. I think it's supposed to be like a an energy Mountain drink. Do energy drink? Yeah. I, I, I that, so have you guys ever had an energy drink where you did nothing but sit on your ass? It makes you Ugh. crash like a motherfucker. Like, hey, we're gonna give you this energy drink, this sugar laden energy drink, so you can game all night. That's not the way it works. If you're yeah, gonna, you don't need a lot of energy to game. I'm just saying, like, uh, if you're going to drink one of those energy drinks that's just loaded with all that bullshit, you you need to be going on a giant, you know, going on a jog or going on a run, you need to move your body because you'll just fucking crash. Mm. You'll feel like shit, especially. So, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So our favorite pocket size retard uh, Van Damme here, he just found out that like, oh, yeah, the guards are in on this fucking uh, all these deaths that are happening. So that's where we're at in the movie. He just called her and said, yeah, the guards are in on it. And he, uh, you need to bring me money. And she's like, fucking, uh, yeah, I guess I'll bring you money. Because, like, oh, she she thought, like, oh, don't you just get some commissary or whatever the fuck it's called? He's like, no, I need cash. She's like, cash don't get into the in here. He's like, you don't even know. Cash is in here. And I need it. See, isn't it a good thing that he put his nice stick in that one spot and didn't touch fucking Van Damme hiding underneath there? Yeah, it is good. It is good for him. Look how he just ripped through that shit. Look, see, he just he gets into this room, but later on, whenever the cop hears the noise and goes to check on it, he has to unlock that door and come in. Oh, it's old. See, does he? Oh, he locked he it. it. Fucking uh, amazing. 
See, just when you See? thought you found a loophole or a fucking goof, they fix it. You're trying to find flaws in a perfect movie, and you just can't. I just can't. This movie's too perfect. I can't fucking critique it. He's looking through the files, man. Look at him. He's got the access. Good thing. This is just like uh, this is just like Encino Man looking through the files. Here in a second, he's gonna cut his arm for no fucking reason. It's just so that the the upcoming the blood. scene will make sense. Yeah, yeah, the blood. Hey, he's he's gonna find out Link's a caveman. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know how he's gonna find out? He's gonna look at it. He's gonna go, whoa, huh? <laughs> no way. And that that's how long it takes him to be convinced. Like, oh, he was in ice. He was thawed out, and he is a caveman. <laughs> It's all it took. I I've been feeling it lately, man. I I wish uh, I don't think Encino Man. See, I wish uh, Disney Plus would get on the ball because they own Hollywood Pictures, right? And yet Encino Man and fucking uh, Son in Law, those movies are not on Disney Plus, and I've been Betas. having a hankering to watch them. See, they're they're, yeah. they're trying to find the original film negative of the alternate take where Crawl turns around and he has boxers underneath underneath his assless chap, so they can reinsert it into the movie for the Disney Plus uh, version. You know what? You might be so. I mean, I know That's you're exactly fucking joking, fucking but. right. That's exactly what they're doing. Or they're CGIing some uh, tidy whities on them. I'm saying, yeah, I think you're onto something there, even though you're making a joke. It's like, you're probably right. It's probably like the ass scene and stuff like that. Fucking betas. Mm. See, well, remember whenever like we heard that was coming out when everybody was like, oh, fucking kiss Netflix goodbye. Fucking goodbye Netflix. Who would have thought like now we'd be sitting here talking about their censored fucking versions of movies they're putting on there. Well, no, I mean, because they started adding Fox shit, though, now. Exactly. To a degree. Well, like, for example, they started adding all the X-Men movies, right? Even those were Fox. And, um, you know, those are... But you know what? I don't know if they have, like, Logan and shit, which was rated R. You might, Yeah, they might, they might be dancing around it. And I don't think there was... I think I think in Days of Future Past, which is on there, Hugh Jackman, you see his full... He has a scene, like Jean-Claude Van Damme, where he's, like, naked. Full blown ass and everything else from the back. So you had a big hog. Well, they don't show him from the front. Betas. But I wonder. I I guess if I I guess I'm curious if I watched that version, if there would be stuff I'd notice edited out. Look, you can. I think you could shit on those comic movies all you want, but it's the most inconsistent series in the world, the X Men series. But there's a few of them that are really fucking good, and then there's just a few that are just fucking terrible embarrassments of movies, and there's a few that are just apparently like apparently the best one in the series is the one I saw, and it put me to sleep in the theater. Which one was it? X2. X2 is really highly regarded. And I think that is one of the best. But the thing is, I think it is one of the best ones. But Days of Future Past is really good. That one's really, really good. And then Logan's good. You didn't see Logan? No. Logan's good. I mean, it was basically. I do always laugh at that fucking screenshot of him with his really square jaw, though. Yeah, that weird beard. Yeah, it makes it look like square. Looking like Robert Zadar and shit. Yeah. That's a good one, though. I mean, they just basically kind of made a. Unforgiven type movie, you know, it's just kind of like a, a modern Western feel. Um, you know, it's doesn't really have mutants. It doesn't even really feel like an X Men movie, except it's got Wolverine. I, other than that, I want to see a, a Wolverine movie about Wolverine getting fucking torn apart by a pack of Wolverines. I'd watch that. I don't think that would happen because I think they would. You know, he's kind of like an animal. They would sense him. I, I don't know. Calm. What am, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking. Here, about. Here's movie yeah. hacking for you. A bunch of words on the screen, and he's just like checking which one it is. He's like, like typing. Yeah, it's this one. It's so funny. Like he's like if you watch him when he's typing, it's like they're adding extra typing sounds. Like if you see his fingers, it's like oh, he's not typing fast enough. Not hacker. Like add more clicking noises. And I like how the password is this simple. Like there's no randomized characters. It's just uh, it's stupid. These access files. <laughs> yeah, but he he he's in. Gargle and come over there. And then whenever he gets into it, it's just a fucking number. It's like a, a serial number, and that's it. And he prints that out, and it's like, now we have the information we needed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So who is this fucking kid to her? They don't ever explain that. Who is he to the fucking Van Damme? Is he fucking him? I like it. He wants payment now. He helped her. Now when's she gonna get? When's he going to get that fucking pussy? Exactly. So Van Damme's like, oh, I know a guy. So, like, uh, presumably they hang out or something. Like, does he go pick him up from school and shit? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. That's like, he's the connection. Yeah, how does Van Damme know this kid? And this kid's got some fucking balls, man. He's like, I'm going to fucking try and mack her after I help her out. Exactly. And she's basically, she wants to fuck him so much. She's got cum brain, but, like, he's underage. 
So she's got to she hold wants on to, give to it to Van Dam. Well, no, because uh, like Van Dam just happens to be there. That's what it all uh, like accumulates to when that scene when he comes in, he's horny, and she lets him go along with it because she's so horny too. Because that kid, she can't fuck the kid. Hey, so uh, do you think do you do you think he's the bad guy secretly? I don't think so. Oh, it couldn't be. Yeah, you don't think <laughs> you don't think that random white guy. That really serves no other purpose. Who kind of help uh, organize all this is bad. I don't think so. Look at this too. This guy, he's uh, he, like he doesn't work at the prison. He's another fucking inmate, and they let him just hang out with these chemicals and shit. Like, what is he? Like, you think he's like a scientist? He's got like a lab coat on. He's got shit around him, like he's working on chemicals. I don't get it. They trust the him. worst part. I mean, yeah, some of these people don't seem like they have it too bad in the prison. The worst part, I think, would just be no natural sunlight, just being locked in all those walls all the time. Sad. I used to work. I used to work in a hospital in the tunnels, and just doing that for like eight hours a day, it fucks with your head a little bit. Imagine being in there all the fucking time. Sad. No windows, man. It drives you crazy. A little bit. I guess he does have a window. Is that a window over there? Amazing. Or is that a light? I thought I saw a window. Maybe it's not that bad. See, I don't have any windows anyway. I'd be fine. So you were talking about gamer fuel, man. So if uh, if they made a gamer fuel that was that Starburst pink drink, would you drink it? Oh, I would come into it and then drink it. I uh, I recently uh, they sell Starburst gum now. It's like Starburst pink gum. It only comes in the strawberry, the pink flavor. That's it. Amazing. But it's ju- juicy fruit Starburst gum, and it's. I don't know why they just don't release more flavors, but I guess maybe pink's just like the most popular and that's the one they decided to test drive it with. Look, I, pink is literally like the only, that's the only flavor you buy it for. You just deal with the rest of the flavors, basically. She's like, I, I hate to see a good man go to waste. No, uh, they're all good, dude. Uh, but yeah, so the, but that gum's fucking the shit, man. I've been chewing it all the time. Well, you could buy Starburst gum in one of those shakers and it's like in those little chiclets, you know? Um, but the one I'm talking about is just like in the sticks and... It's good though, and she's still okay. It, where, where's his parents? Does your parents not have a problem with their son hanging out with this grown ass woman at late at night? Exactly. She just put her hand on his shoulder. And yeah, isn't that really weird? Where he's just like, "Hey, I know a guy." Don't you think it's just were they just pandering to like a cliche of this era of movies where you got to have a teenager hacker? I guess. Like, let's have him be a like. Why? Why does he have to be a kid? See, look, that's the information they needed, and now they take that and they discover something with it. Like what the yeah, fuck? what do they use it for? Do they type it into something? <laughs> like, what is what does fucking Van Dam do with that? I think he's at her house, so which is even weirder. Like, did she pick him up? Did she say, "Hey, can Timmy come out and come over to my house?" Exactly. He's got a nice little ponytail. Yeah, he's trying to be more sophisticated on his second meeting with her. He, I think he's trying to. They've look- got matching ponytails. She can grab him while she's fucking him. Yeah, like Tong Po. Exactly. We talked over the scene where uh, one of the fucking uh, the the girls came in and said, "Oh, I want to tell you, like, oh, somebody's coming for you tonight, so don't go to sleep." And I fucking- didn't. I met. I I mentioned it, and then I and I quoted her. I'd see a good man go to waste. Oh yeah, yeah. But the yeah that it's funny because it's coming up. He's hiding under the bed for whenever they come, and he he basically like puts some pillows underneath the the thing so that they think he's laying there. They start stabbing at him. He didn't tell his buddy on the top bunk too. Like he he could have told him, and then he wouldn't have had to die. Or does he die? Do they just choke him? Uh, I don't think he dies. I'm I you know I think they just choke him. I, mean, I don't know, but yeah, either way, it's a dick move, right? I assume he dies because like they uh they find him and like the the guy runs out before the like the cops get there. They see fucking Van Dam with his buddy and he's like all fucked up. I assume he had to have died otherwise his buddy could have just told him like no, it wasn't him cuz they put him in the hole cuz they think he did it. Yeah, I don't know. Look at you trying to make sense of this movie. Exactly. No, it's this ma- this movie ties together. There's not really I can't think of too many plot holes are in this movie. Exactly. This movie's like a a, a nice laced uh, fucking shoe. All the holes are filled with the shoe strings and uh, tied tightly. When are we gonna get uh, Death Warrant Two? Exactly. Van Dam goes back in the joint now. Exactly. The cops. The cops are in on it again. Now, now he's just hanging out at home, and the cops are like fucking with him at his house and shit. They're like, "Yeah, we got a warrant." And he, they pull it out as your death warrant, death warrant too. Van Damme. He ain't dead yet. 
Oh, yeah, so that is a pretty, uh, yeah, that's not the kind of strangulation you survive, I guess. Like, why would they just do that? Yeah, I gotta see. They. Why does he keep stabbing a pillow? Like, after the first time he stabbed a pillow, wouldn't you think you know it's a pillow? He stabbed, like, three or four. And look, the guy that stabbed the pillow is still laying there. Like, only the one guy got away. So it's like, no, he did it. The guy on the floor. Why are you putting me in the hole? Unless they punish them all. They're like those shitty teachers that are like, oh, you're all gonna stay after her until I know who did it. Fucking uh, sluts. I mean, they didn't see them running away. They, they, It wasn't... They got there like two seconds, like a second after they ran out of there. Exactly. You know what I found out recently? Fucking uh, teachers that make the whole student, like the whole class stay after. They're technically uh, fucking, uh, they're breaking the Geneva Convention. Like if you were, if you were like as a kid, if you were smart enough to say, you're actually breaking the Geneva Convention right now. You think they'd be like, holy shit. I guess I am. You can all leave. Amazing. Yeah. Who's uh who's the better crooked warden? This guy from Man of the House or uh fucking Don Johnson? Crooked Warden, fucking uh Cell Block ninety nine, brawl on cell block. Whoever the warden was in Ernest goes to jail. Hey warden oh, yeah, yeah. catch to probably him from a uh, fucking problem show. He was only in that one scene though. Tough guy to the end, aren't you, Nash? Exactly. What's it to you, warden? What did it do, you would? Amazing shit. We did that, but we did that like a long ass time ago, right? Exactly. Look, he's convulsing after those kicks. Did we do all the good Ernest movies? Uh, no. We did Which two of we them. Did? We did prison, jail, did and scared, and scared stupid, stupid, right? And jail, yeah. What's the we prison do- movie? I what. I just saw it recently too, and I forgot what it was. It's like a prison movie. He gets put in the hole, and like they give him food, and he starts feeding it to a tarantula that's down in there with him. Uh, who's it starring? I don't remember. He had long hair in it, though. Fucking oh, good uh, man. Who was I'm it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google it. <laughs> Forgot what it was. Prison movie Tarantula. He feeds his whole plate of food to the tarantula. Kiss of the Spider Woman? I don't think so. That has Rel Julia in it. That's just what came up when I typed. Uh... Yeah, I don't fucking know, man. The Van Damme did another prison movie, and it was the first movie I remember watching in his post straight to video era. That I was like, oh, this is actually pretty damn good. And it was that movie In Hell. Did you ever see that? No. That was a good one. But they're probably playing it on fucking 24-hour repeat in Hell. Because it's a Van Damme movie. <laughs> uh, well, it also starred Lawrence Taylor, you know, the old uh, uh, football player. And it was directed by Ringo Lamb. And, and he'd worked with Ringo Lamb. I, let me see. What are all the fucking movies he did with him? He did... Uh, Ew, he made Maximum Risk. That was a shitty movie. That's like one of the, one of his shit out the door last. I thought you were going to say Max Keeble's big move. That's an amazing film. See, wouldn't you like run up and try to kick that hose or something? Do something. I mean, you got nothing to lose. Yeah, just block it. Put your finger in there. Boom. Exactly. He just takes it like a bitch. And he's letting him get it sprayed on his face. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's it's going to go up anyway. But, I mean, that whole thing is made of stone, man. Try and climb up something. Just let him, uh... Yeah, it's pretty sad. He takes it lying down. Yeah, what a bitch. It'll light him up, though. He gets thicker. I feel bad, though. He gets a little thicker. Man, fire fire makes you put on 20 pounds. Exactly. Like the camera, you know, it adds, like, 20, 10 pounds. Was he, was he banging against that window with his head or his fist? Oh, I don't know. I thought that was a cool effect, though, because you think people really would do that. I, I what was I gonna do? Put the fire out? Yeah. I don't understand. It's supposed to take your mind off the pain, like major pain. Amazing. This guy looks like Major Dad. Remember that show, Major Dad? Yeah. You know what I just thought too. You remember, like, uh, you know how like the human body and the brain it releases like a natural coping mechanism whenever like. Like, uh, you know how when people say, oh, I was getting in a car wreck and all this shit. Find your happy place. 
yeah, I was getting in a car wreck and all this shit. Like, and you know what? It was weird. I, I, I didn't, uh, I wasn't worried. It's like a calmness came over me. And it's like, oh, it, uh, compare that to like how, like, whenever you're, you're, you know, you made a sandwich and you're walking to the fucking front room, you fall or trip and then your sandwich lands on the ground. Like, moments like that seem like it's a bigger deal than fucking like, oh, yeah, I was, I, I was getting in a car wreck and I, a calmness came over. It's like, uh, yeah, like whenever you find out somebody died, like, it's like, you know what? It, it fucking, uh, it hit me hard, but like, it, it wasn't as earth shattering as I thought because you had that fucking natural coping mechanism kick in and it like, it helps you deal with it. So like, yeah, what if like catching on fire that happens too? And it's like, it's not so bad. Well, I imagine the instant you catch on fire, your nerves are shot. Like you're not, you can't be feeling it for long. You know what I mean? Yeah. Your nerves are shot and Hey, really quick. I have to take notice here. So she's clearly upset when she's coming there to see him, see Van Damme, you know, they're being pervy. They made her undress, get naked and they no doubt frisked her. Right. And they're taking, remember they're laughing. They're taking advantage of the situation and she looks like she's pissed. And isn't she a cop? Yeah. Or is she like a lawyer? So I don't know. She's something. Yeah. But what do, we, what do we follow up that scene of her getting sexually assaulted with Van Dam raping her? Amazing. But now she wants it. Exactly. She's not traumatized by her just getting felt up and just abused like two seconds. The, fell, the feeling up turned her on. She, she clearly looks uncomfortable. See, that's the thing, guys. Women always act like they don't want it, but secretly they do. They're just playing hard to get. That's not true, by the way. Don't take Zach's word for it. Yeah, you don't get Zach is a character, and the things he says is, aren't even endorsed by the guy playing him. We need to start doing the Beavis and Butthead thing before the show. Exactly. Beavis and Butthead are not real. Mm-hmm. Aaron and Zach are not real. If you do anything that they say, you are Exactly. Maybe bleep that out. And don't say that R word either. It's not good either. Oh, I'm allowed to say it, though. I'm, I'm an Aspie. I can say it 10 times a day. <sighs> Terrible. There's always so much I'm sorry for. After recording. Exactly. Yeah, he just looks super rapey, man. He's like super horny. He's putting out that vibe hardcore. I mean, look, how long has he been in there? And is he really that hard up for sex? See the bulge? See the bulge? Yeah, it's it's pulsating. So, but my question is, I mean, he can't have been going all along without release for that long. So he should be able to deal. Is it maybe that priest... Lady boys turned him on so much. He's just been all fucking hell bent. Yeah, maybe the fucking the lady boys fucked him so good, like just off camera, and like fucking now he's gotta he's gotta put it out in the other opposite direction. There you go. He's like, you know, I've been getting fucked in a hole. Now I want to fuck a hole. <laughs> or do you think the lady boys would have let him fuck them? I don't know, but she's all about it. Cat boys are where it's at. She's like, between that fucking preteen fucking undressing me with his eyes and the cops finger banging me, I got to get a dick right now. Exactly. It doesn't even matter that it's one of fucking Van Damme's midget dicks. Because I know I fucked him. Man, he's moving He's mo- He's moving in on his like little cousin's woman or whatever, whoever that hacker is that he hooked him off with. Mm-hmm. Is that Ice Cube in Boys in the Hood? Oh, yes. That Jerry Crow? Look at that guy. Look at that guy. Hell yes. Look at that guy. Look, smoking will stunt your growth. He is living proof. Fucking that guy's a Chad. Very high T. Very <laughs> high T. <tea. laughs> oh, there's the priest, man. Nobody fucks with priest. I'm going to grab a drink. Go for it. You know, I really did think that Zach was going to like this one a little better. I think this one's a cut above. It really is. Uh, is it my all-time favorite? I don't know. It's in my top four, though. But I, I acknowledge this as a competent movie. You know, I love movies like Kickboxer, but it's super cheesy. Uh, I like Lionheart. It's super cheesy. But this is like the kind of movie that your grandpa would like. This is just, it, it's by the numbers. It's definitely off a of blueprint. But I think if you like movies like Lock Up, I think if you like movies like Tango and Cash, I think if you like uh, flicks like that, this movie's totally doable. You know, I dig it. What'd you get to drink? I got that clear America. What flavor? Orange. Yeah, just regular orange. 
Mandarin orange. Yeah, I got a, a cherry vanilla right by my side, but I was chewing gum, so it's probably going to taste nasty if I drink it right now. Doesn't that suck? Yeah, the gum, the after gum taste. Exactly. What's the, what's the other foods that like you don't want to eat right after you brush your teeth? That tastes gross. You don't want to drink anything either. Orange Fucking, juice. Orange juice after brushing your teeth. That's like the worst. Orange juice is just gross anytime. Mm-mm. To me. I love it. This ain't no fish. That's a man. Everybody's like, yeah, Sandman, Sandman. How does everybody know who Sandman is? Everybody. They don't have the internet. How does word travel on how much of a badass cop killer he is? Yeah, like, he called himself Sandman, which leads you to believe it was a nickname he wanted people to call him, but probably no one did, like the Ragman. He's just trying to get people to call him Sandman, but they were all just like, oh, Eddie. Oh, yeah, it's Eddie. He's got a scar on his face. But, like, he like, oh, it's Sandman, like, as if that's what the newspapers fucking named him. So, like, did the newspaper give him that fucking name, and he thought it was just that cool that he, he like, self-proclaimed it to? Like, what a loser. Couldn't couldn't every serial killer just be called the Sandman because they're all putting people to sleep? I get it, how it's punny and whatever, but, like, he's not doing anything different. You know, it's not like, like imagine, a, yeah, like imagine if you're like the Zodiac killer and like they call you that and you're like, I fucking hate that name. That sounds stupid. Don't call me that. Well, but he's just like, oh, I like it. Yeah. I mean, usually a nickname identifies something unique in that particular person. So if you're Zodiac the, was a bad thing to use. If you're the South Shore Strangler like Charles E. Ray, well, you're known for strangling people, I guess. But he's the Sandman because what? He puts people to sleep. That's every serial killer. Uh, maybe he throws sand in their face. Yeah. Pocket sand. Shuksha. Pocket, pocket sand. Shuksha. Fucking idiot. Or... What is he going to do? He's going to fuck him. What, see, like, look at that. <sighs> why did he just undo his shirt? That fucking sound effect is amazing. But why did he do it? What was the purpose of undoing his shirt? Are we gonna cut? He could have cut him with his shirt. It was probably in fucking Van Damme's script uh, demands. I must show my abs. Surprised he didn't rip his fucking underwear off and see his fat ass. He's stabbing him a little bit. Uh, man, I'm so bummed, man. I got uh, shitty news. My, my fucking... I, I've been in this apartment just while the house is getting ready and done. And uh, they it looks like it's delayed two months. So I got to stay here two more fucking months. And it throws a wrench in all my works. And it's a huge fucking headache. And most importantly, I wanted to make a nice purchase for myself. And I can't make any big purchases until I close in the house. Uh, I want to buy a new amp cab amp and cab and even a new guitar i got my eyes on what are you going with i'm gonna buy uh an evh 5153 head uh you know i probably 50 watts is probably plenty for me but I, part of me wants to go big and get way too much for that i need because i'll never gig with it or anything 100 watt but i'll get one of them and then i'm gonna get uh, a four by four by 12 cab that goes with it and i want to get the ivory because i want to be classy and then the guitar I think I've decided I want is a bummer because um, it's it's a Charvel US Pro Mod and the particular guitar I want is well pretty much I think I think everything from Charvel's US shop right now is on back order like a special order and so I called the retailer I go through and they're like yeah it's like a six month wait at least on these I'm like motherfucker so. I'm tempted to still do it, but if my house is pushed off two months, that just increases the next two months. Like, okay, that's, that's an extra two months because it's going to be six months from whenever I get it. But they said it's because of COVID. So who knows? Maybe it'll be better in a few months anyway when I'm ready to do it. But nothing's worse than having to pay all that money and then have to wait. It's because the Covey Bryant he met. Yeah, but uh, do you have any experience with Charvels? What do you think of those? I don't. I've always wanted a super strat, you know, because that's that was the go to thing in the 80s for all the guys like Jason Becker and even, you know, the Van Halen's and shit like that. A real thin, super fast neck um, and, you know, kind of a strat style, strat style body, even like the bullet jack and stuff. And, you know, they they're in bed with Fender to a degree. And, uh, you know, they all their headstocks are licensed Fender headstocks, uh, strat headstocks. Um, and they're all, you know, they're shred machines. So they're Floyd Rose equipped and shit like that. Uh, typically, typically unrecessed, but, uh, no, but it, it's, it's a fucking beaut, but I'm at, I'm at least going to get the amp though right away. Cause I mean the, the, the equipment I have, my, my Ernie ball music man is, is a great guitar. 
I don't know. You ever just you ever just want new gear just to have new gear? Hell yeah. I mean, like I'm not gonna complain. I can deal without the Charvel for now. My Jazz Master's great, but my Music Man that I've had for a fucking decade now, it still goes for thirty six hundred dollars. So it's it'll probably still be the nicest guitar I probably ever own. Uh, the Charvel is gonna cost about two grand, but the amp's the important thing. And you definitely don't need to pay that much money for guitars, by the way. Anybody out there that wants to play or likes to play, you can get a totally competent made in Mexico or Indonesia guitar. It's just the only problem with those is the, the inconsistency in the quality. I mean, you might get a great one. You might get one with some flubs or whatever that may or may not affect any playability. You know, it's just how much you care about that shit. Yeah, once I got my amp, like, I was just like, I never need a new amp. Like, this sound, like, I saved up for it. It was like, that's the amp. It's got the tone I like, baby. And, like, yeah, fucking the, uh, every time I play with it, it's just like, yeah, I never need to buy a new amp. What's the amp you got? The Orange Thunderverb 200. There you go. Is it super high gain? Oh, yes. Those, uh, have you played, uh, even if you haven't played the EVH ones, have you played any 5150s, even the old PV ones? Long time ago. Yeah, I, I liked those too. Well, this, the EVH one, I think they they just outdid it. I mean, it's even more versatile. And uh, it's, I, I, I'm not even a big fan, regardless of adding uh, a boost in anything, you know, like a tube screamer or anything. Uh, but even the people that do love them and they think your sound gets better, even with them. I, I think I've heard from a lot of people that, yeah, this is kind of like one of those couple of rare amps that you, it really doesn't need a boost because it's just so fucking high gain. But uh, yeah, the, the 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 ivory is pretty sexy. For some reason, they charge more for the stealth looking one. I'm like, why? The ivory is sexy as fuck. I actually, I use the tube screamer and I don't even really use the gain on it at all. I like the way it makes it like a screech. Yeah. Screech. Well, I'm stoked. I'm, I'm, I'm squeak, I'm, I'm, I'm squeak, squeak. I think the uh I think the heads are in stock right now, but I think the the calves are like <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's exactly what they sound like. Screech. That's 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 a meme. <laughs> Back whatever me and Mac, we, we were in our first band. Mm. This guy, Brandon's I won't tell his last name. His name was Brandon. And like he'd always like he'd always try to make the, the riffs up with his mouth. Make a riff like dom 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 squeak dom dom squeak. <laughs> so every time, every time we're like playing guitar, I'd be like, "Don't squid, don't squid." <laughs> Amazing. Well, you know, I used to have uh, a Rivera knucklehead, a fifty a fifty watt Rivera knucklehead, and I was playing that through a uh, old school Marshall four by twelve cab, and it it sounded the tits. It was fucking awesome. But I downscaled for a reason because it was a pain in the ass moving anywhere. And when I would go and find people to jam with, it was a fucking pain in the ass moving around a fucking four by 12. You know, I didn't even have a truck. So I'm like, I don't even need this. I'm not really doing anything. I'm not gigging. I'm not doing all this shit. I'm just kind of just playing for fun these days. So I just got a combo. And uh, now I've, after having a, you know, a combo for years now, I'm going back to a stack. Uh, but yeah, it'll be the same thing. Like, oh man, I dumped all because because I could get a I could get the same amp in a in a combo. I could get an EVH fifty one fifty three combo in ivory, but I don't know. I just want to stack again. I miss mm -hmm. having a stack because you can like look at face to face and just get blasted. You can feel the wattage hitting your face. It's a little different. We we passed the part where. Uh the chick found out that like, oh yeah, this guy's in on it. The guy she was talking to. Mm -hmm. The old man the guy. She was, yeah, yeah. His wife or whatever. He's like, he's got his motives, right? His wife is sick or something. I don't fucking remember. Would you hit his wife? I don't remember what she looked like. She looked like an old Nancy Allen. 80 year old Nancy Allen. I'd, I'd probably hit it. Man, there's this, uh, <clears throat> you know, Robert Fripp, you know, who that is. No. The guitar player for King Crimson. Okay, so Robert Fripp, I it was Metal Sucks that posted this, otherwise I would have known, but he uh I guess during the quarantine stuff, he's been putting out like a, a a Sunday video with him and his wife just for fun while they've been in lockdown, I guess. And he's playing guitar and she's singing. And they a, a Metal Sucks posted it because they did a cover of Enter Sandman, which is really weird because you know, King's, King Crimson's like 21st century schizoid man, like 1960s and really weird progressive rock. Like, it's kind of an odd thing. Uh, so 
they were posting it and it's him in his kitchen playing the song, playing the guitar. And then his wife is on like an elliptical bike in the kitchen for some reason, because they have an elliptical in the kitchen and she's doing the elliptical and then she's singing the song. But, and she's older too. Like she looks like she's in her sixties, but she's got this massive pair of jugs and she is just fucking, it's really cold in there. Her nips will nip. You can see everything and it's, and they're just bouncing. And it's really weird. It's like, this chick's like my grandma's age, but she's got a really nice rack. It's really an awkward video. Amazing. I don't know where I was going with that. That's about it. You don't fuck old bitches? Uh, you don't no. fuck a uh, chick old enough to be a grandma? No. You haven't lived. You can do reverse birth pretty easy on them, I imagine. Just put your head mm. back in there. Amazing. All right, so... You know what's funny is, you might disagree with me, but... Eh, because I think 90 minutes, that's about how long... Oh, this movie's 89 minutes. That's that's a good runtime. But you'd think this movie, if any of his movies, that would maybe be closer to two hours would be a movie like this. Exactly. But it moves by real fast. I think uh, I have to give credit to David Escor. Hey, that's Homer Simpson, by the way. Uh, the guy with the mustache? No, that guy. I think that... I'm pretty sure that was... Uh, isn't that Homer Simpson? Let me just double check. I'm pretty sure. Mm, Dan Castellanella. I'm going to look at... I'm pretty sure that's him. Which one? The guy in the lab suit? Yeah, the lab suit. The bald guy, clean shaven. Let me see. That is... So that's the guy that stormed the Capitol just a while back. He's probably the guy that stole the podium. And actually tried to sell it on eBay like an idiot. Did he? He did. <laughs> Fuck. That's how they found him. Fucking, Fucking dummy, idiot. Man. Fucking dummy. Just just leave a paper trail to you. A fucking idiot. Oh, the dude, the guy with the eye is gonna die. That's the, the dude with the eye. Maybe that's not. Maybe it just looks a lot like Dan Castanella. Let me see this guy. See, they, they should have recast this guy right here. It should have been fucking uh, Lyle. Okay, it's this guy. Sorry, that doctor is this guy named Armin Shimmerman. He looks a lot like Dan Castanella. So, yeah, this guy looks like Lyle. Yeah, he looks like uh, Tex Cobb. No, he should have been Lyle. This guy with right now should have been the his buddy, the black dude. I forget that character's name. Oh yeah, why why doesn't he say anything? Why is he just he doesn't say a single damn word like it? They didn't want to pay him enough for a line. They have a line, then they they gotta pay him more. They got to basically uh, give him a scale, like he was uh, just an extra. They paid him the extra. Ernest, things won't be the same without you. You know what I mean? I'll bake you a cake! Amazing movie. Okay, so Priest has it made in there. Why is he trying to like, why is he even assisting? Why is he, well, he's going to end up dying for this? Priest had it made in the shade. He's the fucking, he is, uh... He's the holy one. He's got to help. He's the only buddy of him in there that's got God on him's side. Methed out John Bon Jovi. Yeah, or uh, fucking Mick Jagger. No, definitely Bon Jovi. Mick Jagger. Did he fuck David Bowie or not? Hopefully. You know, I, I hear that those rumors are swirling around back in the uh, 80s, especially. If I was Mick Jagger right now and I knew I didn't fuck David Bowie, I'd probably kick my own ass. Uh -uh. And I'd probably lie and say I did just so I fucking I, uh, I, I could be known as that guy. I know those rumors were swirling around in the 80s, supposedly. And then especially when they made that one video together and stuff. And then it was kind of confirmed. I guess it's still a, a third party, but it was Eddie. It was David Bowie's wife, right? a then wife or something that said she walked in on them in bed, like laying in bed together under the covers. Like she kind of like, 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 so I mean, I lay in bed with men all the time on the covers. I know. And you jack off under the covers with them. You told us the story when you were kids. Exactly. What were you guys watching well, when you guys were all jacking off together? I don't remember. That's really weird, man. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys, are you guys still friends today? And you're like, hey, you remember that? Like, let's not talk about that. 
Or not. Okay, would it be weird, though, if you were? Not really. Uh, are you and Matt close enough to where you'd ever share a chick? Uh, no. What's your opi- what's your what's your opinion of those guys that are like that? That'll share women like it's the ultimate bro bonding moment. Like I don't know, it's either the ultimate bro bonding moment or it's just one step away from banging your bro. I don't know, you know. But I've yeah. I've known those guys that were like that. Oh yeah, we're like ultimate bros, man. I got my dick sucked and he fucked her from behind. He said the cringy line. I could smell the, yeah. See, imagine if the roles were reversed and he was like, I know you're here. I can smell the tiny dick's disease. I can smell mayo or something like that. That'd be racist. <laughs> I smell mayo. Is that what white people smell like? <laughs> I'm just He guessing. looks like, he looks like a Native American. He doesn't even look like full blown. Does he look like Native American to you or something? I don't know. I don't. He's also in first kid in a very, very brief scene, right? I don't know if I've ever seen First Kid all the way. I think I've just seen like bits and pieces of it. I need to watch it because it's got our boy in it. Fucking Sinbad. Yeah, that's great. How is Sinbad doing? I don't know. I hope he's okay. I hope he's, I don't know. He comes. I hope he's not, I hope he's not searching for that big turbo man in the sky yet. Fucking Sinbad. He's dank. He's a Chad. He's a. Very high T. He's a house guest in that big house in the sky. Hopefully not. He's a fucking, he's a well-hung Chad, very high T, he, and he's he's turcum, he's like tightly circumcised, too, I hear. I got Priest just fucking killed the warden, man. He's got so much to, wh- why is he putting everything on the line for Van Damme when, maybe he's just in there, I don't know. He just seems like he runs that place. Mm-hmm. And I assume if he runs that place... He has money or something. He has to have money or something on the outside. Or I, mean, I, I kind of want a priest uh, prequel. Like what? What? Who was he on the outside? What did he do to get there? Mm-hmm. What are his connections like? Why is he helping this random fucking gringo? You mentioned uh, this is the movie that you think could be two hours. I, no, uh, I, I don't think that. I'm glad it's tight, but you, I think I could see a movie like this being yeah, pushed yeah, to two hours. That's what I mean. But like, I swear, like I I watched uh, Lionheart years ago, whenever you guys couldn't sh- like stop talking about it, and I swear the version I had was over two hours. I swear, unless it was just like I was just re- fucking just not getting into it at all, and it was just one of those where I looked at it halfway through and th- saw I was only halfway and thought, oh, it must be two hours. I don't know. I s- I could have sworn. That that movie is two hours though, and I don't know. It's not because part of me is like, well, maybe just it feels like there's a lot more happening in this movie than something like Lionheart, but that's not really the case. Maybe it's because the set's bigger and it's got so many more supporting characters. It just feels like how do they get all this fit into ninety minutes? You know, mm-hmm. whereas Lionheart, it's it's him, Joshua, Cynthia, and Russell. I mean, it's just like it's really not a whole lot of main people. Camera guy Shadow just made an appearance. Oh yeah, I didn't notice it. I love when when Sandman. Is this looks like the set of Terminator Two or Alien Alien Three. Oh yes, that's what it looks like. No, I when Sandman just took an axe to the stomach like fucking Jack Nicholson, right? That, it, you know what I just thought too. Go ahead and finish your thought. I just thought of something really funny. Well, it's just he's the way he, the way he <sighs> screamed. Sandman screamed. Look at that. Ah! I just thought like, what if one day we are making the Mac and Zach movie and all the memes we're making, make it into it at some point, fucking Van Damme shows up and his bulge like bounces, like really, like like, it gets really swole. And then he just comes like fucking in the bulge deflates as he's coming. (laughs) Like fucking we get Van Damme to show up and actually make that joke a reality. Amazing. Or it's like the fucking from beyond fucking perennial gland comes out of his head or whatever it is exactly the penile penial whatever it is they're like they're they're fighting at the end and the bad guy just stiff fingers it and he starts nutting he falls on the ground and starts ah 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 every prison movie has to have a scene not necessarily has to be the final scene but has to have a scene in like the boiler room oh yeah Boiler rooms look good on film, I guess. So how did Sandman not die? Was he really being truthful when he said he can't kill me, uh, Burke? I'm the Sandman. He got he got lit up with bullets. Remember, he shot him like a fucking bajillion times. Yeah, the, basically he did die. But like then like somebody Let's, threw his uh, fucking shirt into like a bunch of sand. 
And like in a really nice CG effect, it like created a man out of the sand. I'm trying to remember the scene Spider from Man 3? Spider-Man 3, yeah. Yeah, it was really stupid. But That was probably the best CGI in the movie. That's sand. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen that movie since I saw it in theaters and it was pretty bad. I've actually I've been tempted to kind of go back and, and watch them for fun now that they're streaming, you know, just everywhere. I think the Spider Man movies, they're not on they're not on Disney right now. They're on like their lease is not up. They're on somebody else. I don't know if it's stars or something. I don't fucking know. Stars. I don't hate the fucking Amazing Spider-Man 2 with Jamie Foxx. Why? Uh, I think it's beyond stupid, and the characters are beyond stupid, but it's entertaining. Like I think the fight sequences and the action is pretty fun. The best thing about that movie is that when Jamie Foxx becomes the uh, the fucking Electri- uh, electricity guy, it closes his gap in his teeth <laughs> for no reason. Well, I mean, they're not... Uh, it's funny because both Marvel and, D- and DC are kind of doing the same thing at the same time. Because the next Spider-Man movie is going to be the Spider-Verse, right? And they've already pretty much confirmed that uh, Andrew Garfield's Tobey Maguire, fucking Alfred Molina's Doc Ock, and then fucking Jamie Foxx are all going to make appearances in this movie because it's going to be the different dimensions. See, since since they're bridging the fucking universes, it should be Andrew Garfunkel. There you go. Because that makes total sense. Simon and Garfunkel and Andrew Garfield just fucking congeal. He starts singing, the, you know, "Hello, Darkness, My Old Friend" and shit when he's on screen. Well, and then DC is doing the same thing because their Flashpoint movie, their Flash movie is going to do that as well because they have Ben Affleck in it and it's going to have Bruce Wayne. It's going to have Michael Keaton in it officially now. It is official. So like, and then somebody posted some clickbait article about Danny DeVito's Penguin too. Like, I, I think that's there, there's nothing to merit there, but. Mm. I think they should just straight up do a Batman Beyond movie and just continue the Tim Burton trilogy and finish it off. Like, make the old uh, third movie that they never got to make. That would be the Chad move, so you know what's not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, no, and it would be the official trilogy, and it's like, yeah, Batman, Batman Returns, and Batman Beyond with the old with the old Michael Keaton, and, you know, he, can't, he didn't age out of the role. He aged into that role because Batman... See... Yeah, if HBO wasn't fucking stupid, they would, like, offer them, like, money's no object. Just name something, and we'll write it on a fucking check for you. Like, we need this movie to happen. This will be donk. All right, so they're Greco-Roman wrestling. They're just, uh... He's gonna shove his head through a spigot, and then he's still gonna laugh. He's gonna say, you can't kill me, Burke. I'm the same man. Then he just goes up to his chin and pushes it up. How do you, how do he survive? It went through his brain. Well, is he just very I, low IQ and didn't hit anything vital? I, I guess not. But all he has to do is uh push up, then it then it hurts his brain. He should have said, "I'm the same man, bitch. I'm the, the juggernaut, bitch." That's a t- not a good movie. I'm talking about the fucking dubbed YouTube version. <laughs> you ever see the cartoon version where somebody dubbed it? He's, "I'm the juggernaut, bitch." From the from the eighty from that nineties cartoon they put it in there. Hell yeah! I want to say I probably have, but I don't remember it. I'm bitch. I'm the juggernaut. <laughs> he, he just keeps fucking saying it over and over. Yeah, so he he loses this battle because he didn't uh, use his pocket sand. Exactly. It's, it's his own damn fault. I'm gonna read some comments. What exactly. say you? Well, on Lionheart, our first commentary of the Jean-Claude uh, exploitation. Jean-Claude January, Lazy Peter writes, Hey guys, did you watch the movie rent pal It's pretty cool and you guys should check it out. I'm sure Zach would make a lot of jokes about the protagonist is a beta. Wait, saying the protagonist is a beta. You ever seen that movie? Never. I don't even know what it is. Who's in it? I don't know. I'm going to look it up. rent a uh, Rent a fuck. I'm not looking it up on Google Maps, am I? Rent a pal. All right, so rent a pal. It's it's got Will Wheaton in it. Amazing. It's the only person I recognize. Look, the Sandman's on fire. If only he had sand to roll around in. Yeah, I'm gonna let Zach finish his piss. 
two cups and I still got some more. All right, so Mendoza on Lionheart, he says, It's good to hear you're listening to Bowie. I love how giddy you are doing a commentary on one of your favorite Van Damme movies, Aaron. The Van Damme exploitation continues. You originally started in 2018 with a commentary to Desert Heat, which is one of my favorites. Riverman has to be in an episode of Van Damme Month. Aaron, I would love to help you out framing whatever print poster you need me to frame, but you know what you have to do. Okay, interesting. Hell yeah. Well, so obviously uh, we came out with the kickboxer last week and um, yeah, did we not read comments last week? Oh, no. Oh, we had already we had already recorded it because I had commented. Oh, you know, yeah, this this came after. So, uh, yeah, we did. Com- we did uh, kickbox with Riverman and uh, I wanted him on this episode and it sounded like he was going to do it. But then, you know, of course, the day of he kind of pulled a Mac and you just kind of ghosting me all day. Like I thought we were going to do it. But, fucking pay Mac, dude. Mac, he's a fucking Casper. He's Casper. He just fucking becomes Casper or whatever it's time to record shit. Uh, our boy Goat on Lionheart, he simply adds another quote to the mix. He goes, It's going to be simple. That's what he does to our boy Billy Blanks, right? On the fucking goat, the goat himself. Exactly. You, you guys just did an episode, right? With him, you and Mac. You guys did uh, Bio Dome. Hell yes. Haven't the 25th listened to 25th anniversary. How did that turn out? I haven't listened to it yet. Turn out good. Amazing. Uh, let's see. Um, basically, fucking like uh, all the the whole universe came together and was in universal harmony. Of that show. Uh, when I sent out a post uh, letting people know that we had uh, Lionheart out at the time, President Elect James typed in Bloodsport, Bloodsport, Bloodsport. Did I mention Bloodsport? So I think he wants Bloodsport, which raises a good question. Uh, I originally had the notion of doing two movies, I think, that are universally liked and then two movies that are just kind of silly. We've kind of done three movies that are all ones that people ha- hold in high regard as far as Van Damme fans. Do we just stay with that theme now since we've kind of done to end do Bloodsport to cap off the month? If you want, baby. Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like we should now, and just kind of make it even, Steven. We should we should throw a fucking big curveball and do a blood sport too. We do kickboxer too with Sasha Mitchell. <laughs> yeah, that guy that like uh, beat his wife or something. Beat his wife from step by step. <laughs> exactly. So well, do you think he was kickboxing uh, the shit out of her? Allegedly, right? I think there was also more to that story. Eventually, like his wife was spinning yarn and shit, and you know. Because uh, cause, cause she, she was pregnant. While she was doing her needle and crochet. That's fucking savage. <laughs> no, like she was pregnant. I remember that came out and he got fired from the show because of all that shit. Because, you know, but but who knows? Who knows? Uh, no, and then the Bloodsport sequels, I believe, were with Daniel Bernhardt. This guy who did those like B-movies. And you guys might know him. Maybe he Look, was. The movie is just like fucking Lionheart. They're, they're in love. For no reason. And uh, the music plays and it, they walk off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it ends quick. It starts quick. It ends quick. But uh, no, Daniel Bernhardt, who took over for Van Damme in the Blood and the Blood Sport sequels, he played this character named Ciro in the Mortal Kombat Conquest live action TV show. Do you remember that back in the day, like on WGN and shit? Amazing. Yeah. Uh, I'd be interested. It, it was it was pretty much by the same production company that put out Xena and Hercules. So it was that kind of show, the same vibe, same type of set, same production values, the whole thing. And I used to kind of get off on watching it. I was like, Oh yeah, it's mortal Kombat." And now, and I used to love when they'd like introduce like a new character I knew from the game and the show. And I don't know why, because it's total ass. But, uh, anyway, we should do, I think when the new Mortal Kombat movie comes out, I think we should do the movie, of course, and I think we should uh, dust off a couple episodes of Mortal Kombat Conquest, and you should watch a couple of them, and we should just do them for fun. Uh, and what do you guys think? I mean, maybe that'll be a fun theme, especially, you know, we're doing the Ash vs. Evil Dead thing uh, for Patreon. It might be fun to kind of do another show down the road, too. Um, but there's lots of shows I would like to do. I think it'd be fun. And stuff, stuff like Mortal Kombat Conquest, they didn't run for very long, so they wouldn't be too taxing. Um, do, you, do you ever watch the Mortal Kombat uh, Defenders of the Realm, that cartoon on USA Network? I don't think so. USA Network had an action block on the weekends, and it had uh, Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm, had the Street Fighter cartoon, had Savage Dragon, and I want to say one other show I can't remember, uh, and that ran for like one season. And 
it's not a terrible cartoon, but it's not a good cartoon either. Uh, but it'd be fun to kind of just kind of do a nostalgia trip on some of that shit sometime. And we could do like the Bill and Ted shit. Um, I don't know. There's there's lots of stuff. I would I would love to do shit like the Street Sharks cartoon. I think we've mentioned that. Like if we do a shark exploitation month, we have to do like a mini Street Sharks marathon, like a few episodes. Amazing. Right, it's just uh, just riffing. So you said you don't have the digital copies of Street Sharks. I don't. I'm I'm tempted. Remember Biker Mice from Mars? Hell yes. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm feeling nostalgic, and a lot of times when I go back and watch a lot of those shows, they don't hold up. But you know, I kind of wanna kind of wanna go check them out. Uh, I think you said the new pressings of Street Sharks uh, DVD come with uh, digital copies though now, right? Mm-hmm. I think I went to go look because you were talking about being nine ninety nine or something cheap you paid for it. And I'm like, oh fuck, I might buy it just for that. Just have a digital copy. And I think I looked and I don't think it was going for no nine ninety nine. So I don't know. You snooze, you lose, bitch. Yeah, but I mean, I would love to hear recommendations on stuff like that. It'd be kind of fun to uh, flirt with the Super Mario Brothers cartoons, the Kemp Dead, Captain N cartoon. If you remember the Nint- Nintendo Power Hour back in the day, the Legend of Zelda cartoon. It'd be fun just to do cherry picked episodes, that stuff for fun, even if it was just once in a while. Uh, let's see, Blocko69 on Kickboxer. Actually, sorry, Kickboxer, we're going to start with Witch King. Dance ba- dance Battle Jean Claude Van Damme versus Crispin Glover. Uh, Van Damme's going to win that, that dance off. No. Fucking yeah. Crispin Glover, he's going to fucking pummel him to death with his Chad jawline. Devin Dungan, uh, Devin Dungan was the gentleman, he was the guy that we, he asked for podcast advice, right, in the last episode when we talked about it. He says, I enjoyed this episode, thanks so much for the advice in the podcast, much appreciated. And then he, um, he put a link down below for anybody that wants to check it out. I mean, feel free uh, to an episode of his show. I haven't had a chance oh, to listen yes. to it, but. I'll 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 try and get around to it, but yeah, it's there for everybody else. If you guys want to jump over and give him some support and uh, give him some feedback, all right. Blocko sixty nine. He says, "I like the scene where Charlie Sheen dips his fists in candy." Hell yes. Referring to uh, what's it called? Uh, Hot shots, right? Oh, I thought he was fucking referring to some like story about Corey Haim again. Oh, that's his sweet candy, his sweet underage candy. Oh, yeah. oh gross. Uh, gamer guy. He says in Kickboxer, good episode. The only Van Damme movie I've seen is Bloodsport, which is great, but I'm looking forward to watching some of his other films. Fortunately, Aaron, the Van Damme expert, mentioned some titles I'll have to keep an eye out for. Films like Universal Soldier and Hard Target. If Devin reads this, okay, so he's giving you advice too, Devin. Unsolicited advice. No, he says, be sure you and your friend are collaborating, coming up with ideas y'all can agree on. When this uh, channel was Will and Matt's excellent podcast originally, we were we would brainstorm ideas and never act on them. At a certain point, doing the commentaries became routine and it took some of the fun out of things. Uh, that and some other things which we won't discuss. But uh, yeah, I mean, to piggyback on that, man, just yeah, just follow through. Just try new stuff and and don't talk so much. Just do. I mean, it's it's not that hard. I mean, so we're talking about, hey, wouldn't it be fun to do like street sharks? We'll do it. Eventually, we'll do it, you know? Oh, yeah. Our boy fucking Sam Raimi also had uh, something to do with uh, our target. That's Donk. Oh, oh, yeah. Did he? Oh, yes. What did he do? I forgot. Producer or something. <laughs> uh, trend killer, kickboxer. He just basically says ellipsis. So, yeah, kickboxer. <laughs> Was it not to your liking? <laughs> not your favorite movie? Roddy kid. With uh, a grown-up with the IQ of a child. Uh, On the mask, we got a random comment from Disney65 fan. They said, watching the movie right now, since Jim Carrey is 59 on Sunday, it's hard to believe his 60th is next year. Hilarious guy. The mask used to scare the bejesus out of me. Now, as an adult, I was was like, why was I ever afraid of this? I don't know. Why were you? I was never scared of it. I I was always uh, unimpressed with it, though. What a beta. That movie was donk when I was a kid. Yeah, but you even acknowledge when you go back and watch it when we went, you're like, yeah, it's not as good as it used to be. Fucking, uh, I was lying. I was lying just to fucking make you think you were right about something. So are you, uh, are you a, a Jim Carrey fan in general? Because Disney fan, we got a lot of, we got, we did Liar Liar. Have we done Dumb and Dumber? No. How is that possible? Because we're stupid. I think for the longest time we were afraid to do comedies because we would end up just laughing at everything. And just like quoting the movie. But I think we should uh, shake off that stigma and we should do it. 
We got to do the shitty sequels first, though. Dumb and Dumber 2. Dumb and oh. Dumber. No. That's that's one I might put my foot down on. I, it would be fun to do Dumb and Dumber 2, though, just because it's so bad. That's not Oof. one we... You don't want to do Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> I mean, we could. Harry Met- I would probably put Dumb and Dumber above Dumb and Dumber 2. We could literally do a whole month of Dumb and Dumber because we could do Dumb and Dumber, Dumb and Dumber, Dumb and Dumber 2, and we could do uh, the very short-lived Dumb and Dumber cartoon. Amazing. We literally could have a, a Dumb and Dumber exploitation. Isn't that fucked up? So... Yeah, that'd be fun to do sometime. But uh, check out some of the stuff we have done. We've done Once Bitten. We've done Liar Liar. Ah, we did Batman Forever, right? Did we do that on our channel? Yeah. Yeah, so we've done Carrie stuff. So definitely check it out. Lastly, I'm going to finish it off. Kickboxer here, Adrian Mendoza. He says, no love for Hard Target. This movie is so gay. I love it. (laughs) Kickboxer says, I think the scene of Van Damme taking photos of the kid isn't so bad, but I do love that Van Damme and his mustachioed brother look like gay lovers on holiday. (laughs) Hell yes. That would have been a better movie. I was hoping to hear the Corey button in this episode from See, Zach. See, wait, wait, wait. That could have been the better movie. He could have just be fucking pissed off that he can't get fucked by his uh, gay lover anymore because he's like paralyzed from the waist down. That. <laughs> that's why he's uh, taking it out on Tong Po. There you go. And uh, he, ben, uh, M- Mendoza said, I was hoping to hear the Corey button in this episode from Zach. Do you have a Corey button? Yeah, I haven't used a soundboard in a while. Man, that would have been perfect for the Tong Po quote exactly. i'm surprised you didn't whip it out he says i hope to hear it by the end of van damme month he says we can't disappoint him on our last one. Oh yeah maybe we got to bring out the old uh fucking cory button and if 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 riverman doesn't show up for the last one we'll have to use that river button too you know josh james showed interest in, in doing one with us oh yes as long as it wasn't one that he did uh with hard to kill podcast which i don't think he did blood sports so I think blood sport would be the way to go. So I think we should try and have somebody on or I don't know. I don't know if goats into these types of movies, but we'll see. But maybe the Corey button will appear regardless. So oh, yeah. do, do you have anything you want to pitch, man? Any up and coming Mac and Zach, anything on the Patreon or I know the goat thing you did. I want to pinch a tent. Okay. Besides the tent, you want to pitch a tent. You want to pinch a loaf, but anything you want to promote. Oh, fucking, uh, we covered everything, baby. All right. Well, we haven't recorded a new Mac and Zach yet. Mac's uh, slacking. Okay. But yet he always wants to live with us. So we got to get on a schedule with a live thing. I, I totally, you know, Mac talks about it and I agree. I've never not agreed with anybody. We need to be, we need to consistently do the lives. It just gets really fucking tough to coordinate sometimes. And uh, I... <sighs> I could do it, but yeah, sometimes it's like the day can't exactly be the same, and ideally it should be the same. But um, I don't know. My only, my only, my only thing with it is, is you know when we were talking in private and Mac was like giving his case. Well, you know, I kind of have by because I'm like, how about Sunday? Sunday would be like a sure thing. Like I like it would never budge from a Sunday. That's for sure. But he's like, well, you know, I'm this is kind of my chill day. I just don't want to do anything before I have to work the next day. I'm like, don't you think every time we're recording a podcast? This is all time we could be chilling. <laughs> like it all, everything we do takes away from chill time. Everybody wants to chill. All Everybody wants to do is to- come and sit in front of a camera and dance like a monkey. That's pretty chill. But I get it. I get it. I, I I'm all about it. I have that unwind time. Like I want to chill. But like I'm willing to do it on a Sunday if we have to. And I'm recording on Saturday. I mean, this is I I could be chilling too. And you know, and I get all the stuff with having kids and stuff like that. But I, I I don't know. I it's all it's always going to take sacrifice. That's how it works. We can't just cater a hundred percent to some but one person's schedule. We kind of have to compromise a little bit. And he's being a super champion of it. Like we got to do lives every week, and we got to be consistent with it. Well, then you you would think he would be really really willing to sacrifice a little bit. And 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 well, he was saying. And if it was Sunday, I could do it. Maybe at least not at night. I I, I see. I will sacrifice. I told him, I said, okay, well, if you guys want to do Sundays, at least for now, if we don't, if you know, maybe eventually go back to Saturdays and I'll do during the day, I'll do, I'll do during the day. I'll do early. I'll do in the afternoon, whenever he wants to do. That's my, and he never actually answered me when I kind of called him on it, but I will. I don't know if Zach I can. think he said something after that. I think he was like, oh, I got the kids on Sundays in the daytime. Uh, yeah. I mean, so we'll figure something out. I don't fucking, but here's the thing. I mean, it's nice to have the whole, and I told him, I said, well, we don't have to 
if it's really this difficult, we don't, as long as there's at least two people, that's an option too. We could keep it consistent. And if sometimes you can't have a third person, well, then that's just the price of it. He's like, we got to have the whole gang there. I'm like, well, you're not helping me. <laughs> like what? We need to like bend somewhere. But see, I was thinking like I could do ones on my own and just tell, hey, everybody go get in the freaking discord on the fucking uh, on the uh, retro rampage channel. Uh, we'll fuck up to have uh, bring uh, random people in one by one and you could talk while I play the game. I Whatever. I mean, maybe uh, next week. Like I said, if you and Mac want to do it on Saturday and text out the Discord, if I can't, f- fine, go for it. But if y- if he can't for some reason Saturday and it's a Sunday thing and it just has to be me and you and you want to try out the Discord thing, we can do it. We could do it and just have it be known. We could put it out there like, hey, this is the uh, beta for the the Discord. It's we'll put it out here for you patrons. And uh, I mean, if it doesn't work, we're just we're, we're trying to make it work. That's the thing. But we could test drive it. And if anything, we're just going to get, we can do a live out of it. I don't fucking know. I'm just throwing shit out there, but we're going to get figured out regardless. Uh, so I, I think it's looking like we're going to do blood sport next week. So keep an eye out for that. I don't know what we're doing for February. I mean, whatever Zach wants to do, because I kind of ran amok with Jean-Claude January. Do you have any ideas for February? Do you want it to just be randomized? Do you want it to be a theme that you want in particular? Or like your, even if it's a theme like your favorite, somebody requested not that long ago, just a month where we do our favorite like soul food movies, just a favorite comfort food movies, the movies we love. Is that oh, something yeah. you want to do or? I'll think about it, baby. Okay. All what, right. What, what are we doing for Cinema Anima this month? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whose choice is it? It's yours. Oh, you know what we're supposed to do? What? It's a uh, river man. He wanted to do Waterworld. And I said, well, if you want to do cinematic with us, you can choose the movie. And uh, so I'll remind him of that. So and then I'll let you know ASAP. But and I've actually never seen Waterworld. So it's perfect. Have you seen Waterworld? Not in a long time. Well, and just like this fucker worships Top Gun, he worships Waterworld, which it scares me because I watched Top Gun finally. <laughs> like, And it's just another one of those movies that he watched when he was a kid and he's always defended it. So uh, oh, I guess I know what I'm in for. But anyway, yeah, so that's what the plan is. If Riverman for some reason can't, um, I'll have to come up with a backup. What was the one we did before this, though? Before Waterworld? What was the last cinema? Uh, the thing. Oh, uh, okay. Rock on. All right, so I'll come up with a backup. But I'll, I'll talk with River tomorrow, and we'll get something in the works there. Uh, as usual, Patreon. We have a Patreon. If you, uh, if you guys are already supporting the channel and subscribe to us, and subscribing to us in, on podcast uh, services. That's all we can really ask. Make sure you guys are at least liking the videos. Top a second, like the video you're watching. Maybe give us a five-star rating on something like uh, Apple or Spotify or Google Play Stitcher. That'll help tremendously. Uh, but if you guys wanted to help us in the addition, we do have a Patreon for literally $2 a month. Uh, you can get early access to all the shows. You get an exclusive Mac and Zach episode monthly. You got uh, Zach and I that are uh, we're unloading the entire Ash vs. Evil Dead seasons one, two, three commentaries for every episode. We've got a few more in the bag. Those will, I don't know, Zach could probably tell you when those are going up. But there's a few up there. Uh, there's hidden gems, hidden treasures like the prank phone calls and uh, there's video clips, there's behind the scenes shit, there's Riverman video pickup vi- uh, vids, uh, there's there's videos by me, there's lots of stuff. And anything else you guys might suggest that we do, let us know. We're always happy to try our best to accommodate, but $2 a month and you guys get access to all that shit. Plus, the what we discussed earlier, the Discord, we're still working out the kinks to it, but basically uh, we do have a private Discord server set up for you guys. Uh, and the, the idea is for you guys to be able to join in when we're recording these shows and then maybe at the end of the show we can answer your questions or even let you even come on the mic and stuff and unmute you and you can ask them live or we can just read them but a way to help you guys and let you guys be more interactive with the show uh other than that we got a teespring if you guys want to go buy some sexy designs if you want to support the channel and look great doing it uh follow the links below for the teespring and they always kick us back the health healthy profit from those so those are always appreciated and um yeah, that's about all we got. Mac so. put out his official dick pics on the Patreon. Oh my good lord. He didn't. I don't think he can. I think if we I, did, we'd probably get in trouble. Yeah, I think Mendoza would call you on bullshit because Mendoza's a Patreon thing. He would he would he would call bullshit. Oh, he would be yeah. like, no. Hey, really quick though. So 
I had an idea. I guess I could talk about it on the show real quick. So uh, one of my resolutions, my goals for 2021 is to really get into video content. And I just, I, I'm debating back and forth. So I have an idea for a show that I think is really good and really solid. My only issue is uh, I want it to be on Revival House because it, it fits in line with what we do here. And I think adding video content will help propel the channel. It'll boost the channel. And uh, it's going to take me time kind of learning the ways and it's going to be some growing pains with it. But hopefully you guys dig it. My only thing is I think ah, part of me is like, God, but we have so many fucking podcast shows. And it's like if I, I, I if the videos do well, I would like to do some other videos like for different days. But then we might be dealing with like a shit ton of content. So I don't know if you guys would like video. Co- should should Zach and I start another? <laughs> do you think that makes sense? Should we start a video channel side or should we all do, should we just cater to the one revival house? Do you think, oh. you know what I'm saying? Like, is there benefit or non-benefit to that, to each one? Now, the the I I toyed with the thought, OK, what if we had a separate channel for video shit? Well, then we run the risk of an uphill battle because we don't we're starting from ground zero. And, you know, it's really hard when you have no subscribers. Whereas on this channel, we've we've already got enough subscribers to where we'll be in the algorithms, and we have uh, we have uh, the installed base of people listening, and we have all the features that YouTube gives. So that's the big thing. But I don't know. Part of me is thinking, well, maybe it wouldn't be so bad because eventually, stuff like uh, the retro episodes of Exploited Cinema will run out, right? Sooner or later, we're going to run out of some of these older shows and then maybe it won't be cluttered, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe we can, I mean, I don't know how Zach feels about it, but maybe we will get to a point where it will just be, there will be room for everything. Like, you know what, we'll we'll, we're just kind of down to the BTM show and we're just down to Mac and Zach. And then we get all these days of the week to put like video content if we want to come up with new types of weekly thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm Mm-hmm. So maybe it'll all work out for the best. Cause like I said, I mean, how, how many exploited cinema and we can still put up exploited cinema when they come out new, but they don't come out new all the time. How many, uh, old episodes do we have exploited left? I don't know. So, uh, but I, I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts on that? I'm just curious. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm selling a self short. I mean, that's the, that's really the big drawback is like, a, do we really want to compete with ourselves with another channel? But I know a lot of people do that. But I'm just scared. It'd be different if we had like a million subscribers because because those guys that do that, all they have to do is ask their subscribers to go over and follow the blind channel blindly and they'll they'll pad it enough to where they start off. OK, you know, we're not there yet. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know. So I, I was just throwing it out there and see what everybody thinks. But um, and what Zach thought and stuff. But anyway, that's all I got. I was just kind of ran, running off on a tandem there. Exactly. Zach, say something. Say, say anything. 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 Is that all you got for the show? That's all I got, babe. All right. Thank you guys all for the support and the love and all the comments. Uh, keep it coming. We'll see you next week with uh, Bloodsport. Bye bye, puppets. End of the week at the Revival House. Next month's theme, you gotta figure it out. Italian zombies are Polly Shore. I slash it with the knife and the girl next door. And one second in, get it all queued up and ready. Hit play in three, two, one. Bye bye, puppet. Zach Pete in a solo cup band. Couldn't this crew cameras love and Josh and Scott failed and Riverman's bail. Bye bye, puppets. Sounds good, like this country used to.